What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the Samsung S20 Ultra and comparing it to the top of the line iPhone 11 Pro Max. We're also going to be announcing the giveaway winner from a few videos back, so stay tuned for that. The reason I selected these two phones for a comparison today is because they're both premium flagships from premium manufacturers. They are also nearly identically priced right now in April 2020. So in Australia, you can pick up the Samsung S20 Ultra for $19.99, which is approximately equivalent to $1,270 USD. You can also pick up the iPhone 11 Pro Max for $18.99 or $1,200 USD. I know these USD figures might be a little bit off, but that's because the Australian dollar has dropped so much because of this COVID-19 pandemic. The best place to always start with a tech comparison is with a quick spec sheet. Now, the spec sheet doesn't really give us too much until we start looking into it in a little bit more detail, but we'll get into that. I'm gonna go through and let you know all of the features for the S20 and the iPhone 11 side by side. Because again, many of you have asked for this feature in the comments down below. So I'm trying to do everything I can to improve these videos and make sure you continue watching them and liking them along the way. So the S20 Ultra comes in with a 6.9 inch display and the iPhone 11 has a 6.5 inch display. Very minor differences, but enough to be significant. I know personally I use the S20 Ultra every single day. It is the phone recording this video as well. And it is slightly, ever so slightly, a little bit too big for my hands. So in preference, I would actually prefer a 6.5 inch display like the iPhone 11 Pro Max has. On the back, which is one of the most important features of both phones, is a quad camera setup on the S20 Ultra and a triple lens setup on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. On the S20 Ultra, you get a variety of different lenses and megapixel counts. You of course have the main 108 megapixel wide camera, the 48 megapixel telephoto camera, and the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. You also get the time of flight camera, which is considered their fourth camera. And all that is really is a very advanced depth of field sensor, which Due to some faults and some software bugs, you're probably gonna notice along in this video, there is a very hard hunting of focus throughout the whole video. And the S20 has some software bugs, even with two, I think maybe three updates since I've purchased this device, all focused on the camera, they're still not perfect when filming in 4K. The iPhone 11 Pro Max, on the other hand, has a triple ultra wide, normal, and telephoto all at 12 megapixels. On paper, they are miles apart. The S20 Ultra looks significantly better, but because of some software features, the iPhone is actually able to keep up. And we'll take a look at that very shortly. Continuing on with the camera, and one of the most impressive features that the S20 Ultra has is its space zoom capabilities. Now, if you've seen the results of the space zoom, you know it's a little bit potato, especially when you go to the maximum, but I think it's more about the potential of the technology than anything else. The S20 Ultra has a 10 times optical zoom, which is able to extend to 100 times digital zoom. So everything up to about 30 times zoom, in my experience, is still pretty good and still pretty clear. When you go into 100 times zoom, you get a little bit of distortion, a little bit of noise, and a little bit of pixelation. So it isn't perfect. Whereas the iPhone 11 Pro Max gives you a two times optical zoom and a 10 times digital zoom. I do wanna showcase one photo here before we dive into the full photo review a little bit later on. This is a photo of the supermoon that happened a few weeks ago. I was standing in the middle of the park at night time, and you can actually see how far away I am from it in the ultra wide perspective. However, I had to place this phone on, I don't know, it was a bollard to be able to keep it steady at a hundred times zoom to actually be able to take a photo because the camera itself shakes and moves so much, especially considering it was a windy day. But the final picture produced wasn't actually half bad at all. To be able to get some detail and some shadows in the moon itself from 
a phone is very impressive to me. So I just wanted to follow up with that before we move on to the next thing. When we look at the video specs, the S20 Ultra can film in 8K at 24 frames a second. That's its absolute maximum. It obviously does 4K in 60 frames and 30 frames, as well as everything below. The iPhone 11 Pro Max tops out at 4K 60 frames a second. Even though the S20 Ultra does have 8K video recording, I personally haven't found it to be of high enough quality to actually use in an everyday situation. So I always stick to the 4K 30 frames a second on this device. When we compare the performance, the S20 Ultra comes out on top on paper, but in reality, it is a different story. The S20 Ultra has 5G capabilities, which no, doesn't cause COVID-19, so stop Googling that. It also has 12 to 16 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigs to 512 gigs of storage, and up to one terabyte of micro SD storage. Paired with 120 hertz refresh rate screen, 5,000 milliamp hours of battery, and a Snapdragon 865 processor, it is a beast on paper. The iPhone 11 has an A13 Bionic chip, four gigabytes of RAM only, and options of 64, 128, and 512 megabytes of storage. It has no potential for expandable storage and only 3,969 milliamp hours of battery inside. When you compare those facts on the paper, you think, wow, the S20 Ultra has got it beat. But when you put it into reality and actually take a look at the software driving the hardware and look at it from a Geekbench performance rating, well, the S20 Ultra versus the iPhone 11 Pro Max is a very different story. On Geekbench, for example, the S20 Ultra gives a single core reading of 891, whilst the iPhone tops that with 1336. The multi-core reading is again the same thing. 3205 for the S20 Ultra and 3000 237 for the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So the iPhone is able, even with its four gigs of RAM, to top out the performance of the S20 Ultra because the software on Apple's devices are so thinned down, minimalistic, and optimized perfectly to be able to perform way better than an S20 Ultra. Okay, so let's move on to the photo comparison. I've taken a few of these photos from Tom's guide because he has done an exceptional job at comparing them, but I want to compare them in my own perspective and light. The night mode photo is one of the most, I believe, uh, perfect photos, I guess, to compare these two devices. It puts actual hardware and actual software to the test. Now in Tom's guide, he said actually the iPhone 11 is a better quality photo in this example, but personally, I don't believe that at all. If you take a look at the S20 Ultra's color, quality, clearness, and sharpness, you can definitely tell that the software is able to override what Apple is able to produce in these low light situations. It is also able to produce a much more natural looking photo, whereas the iPhone 11 gives it more of a warm tone. Personally, for me, that makes it a little bit easier to edit in post, especially in Lightroom. I found that every photo I've taken in HEIC format of the S20 Ultra has been phenomenal and very, very easy to edit in Lightroom, which going from RAW to HEIC is actually a very nice surprise. The only issue here is when the focus is good on the S20 Ultra. The focus is still a software glitch and there is so many times it is hunting for focus. It doesn't have dual pixel autofocus, so you're tapping on the screen trying to make it focus and it's missing the point entirely. But most of the time it is pretty good. It does a decent enough job. However, it does definitely draw this phone down when you're spending $2,000 on a phone and having focus problems. Okay, so we're about halfway through the video. I thought I'd take this short break to announce the winner of the giveaway. If you didn't know already, in a couple of videos ago, I was giving away the Samsung Galaxy Buds Plus to a lucky winner. Now, I have absolutely no idea how to do this, so I generated a random number using Google Random Number Generator and decided to count down the comments because 
I actually don't know how to do it any differently. If you do, let me know in the comments down below. This is my first giveaway. So the lucky winner is number 61 and it is Mary Matthews. So Mary, please send me a DM on Instagram, Twitter, whatever you want and get in touch so I can send these buds to you as soon as possible. Continuing with the performance now, and as we know, the iPhone 11 Pro Max has actually outperformed the S20 Ultra with Geekbench results. But what does that mean in a real life comparison when gaming, for example? I'm not a big phone gamer personally, I don't have the time for it or the patience, so I just tested these in a very simple scenario. For me, the 120Hz refresh rate and the bigger milliamp hour battery allows me to actually enjoy these games a little bit longer and enjoy the performance a little bit better. So having 120Hz refresh rate versus the standard iPhone 11 60Hz refresh rate is a pretty big difference for me. Even though it will perform better on the iPhone 11, overall I think it is a very difficult decision to make if you're going out and purchasing one of these phones. The S20 Ultra has a plethora of amazing details and huge numbers that are overwhelming, whilst the iPhone 11 Pro Max has a track record of phenomenal performance, great customer service, great history. For me, I own an S20 Ultra. It is my device of choice. That is because I like to have some freedom in my performance and in my software. That is the only reason. But if I was to take away that fanboy nature from Samsung and actually look at this in a realistic light, I think I'd wait three months to purchase the S20 Ultra for them to really work out all the bugs, especially these autofocusing ones. I do apologize if my face goes in and out of focus many a time during this video. If I had to purchase one now, knowing all these facts, I would have probably purchased the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So that is a very simple comparison from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Unlike usual, I am gonna be back very, very shortly. Over this quarantine period, I'm gonna try to produce as much content as I can for you guys. So stay tuned, smash that subscribe button 2020 style, and I'll see you in just a couple of days.